Okay, thank you very much for inviting me and uh, sorry that I could not be there in person, but uh, let me talk about this. Uh, so, oops. So, so now you can see my second slide. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Guess, yes. yeah, we can see yes. it, we can see it. Okay, so I will talk, um, my, uh, the outline of my talk is, uh, first I will talk about design and design, especially design and science and the update of design, and then be design uh, and summarize my talk. So what is design? Uh, design stands for Deshi Health Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. And uh, uh, like LGWA, uh, uh, it bridges the gap between LISA and ground-based detectors. And design can up like that. And uh, Decigo can play also uh, uh, as a follow-up for LISA and the predictor for ground-based detectors. And the good thing about this uh, uh, <coughs> frequency window is that um, the, the low confusing noise limit uh, due to uh, a white dwarf, double white dwarf um, binary, uh, because uh, um, it cannot sweep uh, above they're about 0 0.1 hertz. So around here, uh, we can have uh, extremely high sensitivity. <coughs> so this is a pre-conceptual design of DeSigo. So DeSigo uses a differential public parallel interferometer. The arm length is 1000 kilometer and the mirror diameter is one meter. Uh, laser wavelength is uh, 0 0.515 micron and the finesse is uh, 10. And uh, laser power is 10 watt and mirror mass 100 kilogram. And we have, a, uh, we have three drug free uh, spacecraft and containing three interferometers. And it will be put in heliocentric orbit. Uh, four, four clusters will be put in heliocentric orbit. So we have one, two, three, four clusters. And we have those two <coughs> very um, far. Uh, clusters to increase the angular resolution of the source. And also we put the two clusters at the same place uh, and to have a correlate to, to have a correlation uh, analysis for primordial gravitational wave waves. And this is this uh, graph shows the uh, target sensitivity of this angle and aimed science. <coughs> uh, first this is frequency and strain. And uh, this curve is the target sensitivity of one cluster of the cycle. And this one is uh, uh, target sensitivity with a correlation uh, for two year, uh, three years. Uh, first, here you can see that uh, this is a uh, predicted gravitational wave signals uh, coming from black hole, black hole binary coalescence uh, with uh, 10. Uh, 10 to the 3 solar mass at 0, 10. So we have a very good sense, uh, signal to noise ratio. And we have a good uh, um, statistics about the intermediate mass black hole. And also uh, here you can see that the neutron star, neutron star coalescence at the Z, Z of 1, we have a pretty good sensitivity, uh, signal to noise ratio. And I will talk about this one a little bit uh, la later. And that, as, as for dark matter, <coughs> if uh, a part of dark matter is uh, primary black holes, uh, the density fluctuations that produced uh, primary black holes uh, must have uh, produced black, uh, gravitational waves. So we should, uh, we should uh, uh, measure that, that kind of uh, gravitational waves. And uh, <coughs> for general relativity, uh, this is a uh, tens uh, black hole neutron star coalescence, tens the uh, ten solar mass and neutron star at zero one. So if we measure this one, uh, we can improve the accuracy of uh, general relativity by a factor of uh, ten to the four or so. And <clears throat> this one, uh, neutron star neutron star at zero one. If we uh, we can have uh, some. Uh, we can measure the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. And I will talk about this one later. And <clears throat> also the most important thing is the primordial gravitational waves. 
Uh, but uh, <coughs> uh, this Omega GW, the upper limit has been reduced uh, like this. So we are now uh, the optimizing the uh, design for primordial grav gravitational wave measurement. <coughs> so let me start about uh, with the primordial gravitational wave. So this, uh, uh, this is also direct observation of uh, uh, primordial gravitational waves from inflation is very important uh, to tell uh, whether inflation really happened, which inflation model is correct, and uh, also parity violation. Uh, this means that if, uh, as I mentioned, we put two clusters at the same place, but if we have, uh, if we put two clusters with uh, some distance, we can distinguish clockwise and counterclockwise gravitational waves. So we can uh, have some uh, uh, information about the parity violation. And also we can measure some, we can do some separation of tensor uh, vector scalar mode things. <laughs> And this shows uh, the accel the measurement of the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. So assume that uh, we have neutron star neutron star binary, and the gravitational waves is emit the gravitational waves are emitted from that, and we detect that with DSEGO. And this is a kind of uh, uh, <coughs> waveform of gravitational waves. And um, of course, uh, 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 <coughs> assuming uh, there's no acceleration. But if there's acceleration, we see some um, phase change, uh, phase difference uh, between the uh, <coughs> uh, yeah yeah th those two waveforms. So we can measure, we can directly measure this uh, acceleration effect. <coughs> and uh, the cycle and the gamma ray burst is uh, very important. And the prediction of neutron star, uh, the cycle can predict neutron star, neutron star coalescence, uh, time and uh, location. And uh, <coughs> the cycle can, the cycle starts uh, seeing the signals uh, even five years before coalescence. And the expected event rate is uh, 10 to the six per year, which means 300 events per day. And uh, with angular accuracy of one arc second, and assuming that short gamma ray burst comes from a neutron star neutron star coalescence, uh, which is very likely, uh, assuming one thirtieth of short gamma ray burst can be detect detected uh, because of the beaming effect, we can have uh, an expected event rate for gamma ray burst uh, tends the, uh, 10 times per day. So we, we have a very good prediction. So we can even uh, watch the even uh, uh, gamma ray burst uh, even before that happened. <clears throat> and so frequent and detailed observation of gamma ray burst by electromagnetic waves. Yeah, that's very important. And uh, <clears throat> other science targets include uh, thermal history of the universe, uh, planet around neutron star, a uh, Higgs sector, gravitational lens for gravitational wave, uh, those things. <clears throat> Requirement of, requirements of the cycle <clears throat> is like this. So this, show, uh, this is frequency and strain, and uh, this is the uh, target sensitivity of LISA, and uh, this is the uh, target sensitivity of uh, ground-based vector, uh, second, uh, <coughs> uh, second generation. And this cycle uh, is here. <coughs> so false noise, uh, you, you can see that the, this line is uh, kind of lined up uh, with this line. So it means that uh, <coughs> uh, uh, just a moment. Uh, and also the, the distance uh, is uh, different between LISA and DeSigo by a factor of 2,500. And the DeSigo has a heavier mass. So it means that the, uh, for DeSigo, the force noise is 20, 25, 25 times more stringent than LISA. And uh, for sensor noise, so you can uh, again see that this line, uh, this is the kind of same. So it means that um, <coughs> sensor noise is 30 times looser than Kagura oh, because uh, the storage, storage time is different by a factor of 30. So this is something like that. So force noise is pretty stringent and uh, uh, sensor noise is not so stringent, but of course in space, everything is diff uh, difficult. <coughs> 
So let me talk about the update of uh, primordial gravitational wave things. So as I said uh, before, the upper limit of primordial gravitational waves was uh, this omega GW corresponding to two times 10 to the minus 15. So at that time we designed the uh, DeSigo uh, so, uh, so, uh, so that uh, we could uh, detect PGW with a pretty good sensitivity. But uh, the upper limit of PGW has been reduced by the Planck observations, et cetera. And now around 0.1 hertz, uh, the uh, omega GW is about, the upper limit of omega GW is about 10 to the minus 16. So now you can see that the uh, DeSigo uh, <coughs> cannot detect uh, uh, PGW very well. <coughs> so, <coughs> So the target sensitivity of this angle should be improved to enhance the possibility of uh, detection of PGW. <clears throat> so this is uh, some figure about that optimization with the quantum noise. So this one, um, <clears throat> the following parameters such as uh, cavity length, uh, reflectivity of mirror and laser power uh, up to 100 watt, uh, optimized for the best signal to noise ratio for a given mirror radius. and uh, we considered only quantum noise here. And this is a, uh, the formula of signal to noise ratio. And here, uh, first of all, this red curve is the most important one. This shows uh, signal, to noise rate, signal to noise ratio. The default mirror radius of this angle is 0 0.5 meter. So here, so you can see that uh, this, this uh, left axis shows uh, signal to noise ratio. So it means that here, the signal to noise ratio is uh, some uh, less than uh, about 10. Um, and uh, at that time, the so this blue line uh, shows the cavity length. So you can see that uh, with this default uh, mirror radius, um, this is about about 1000 kilometer. So this is uh, uh, almost the same as the uh, default um, uh, length of this angle. <coughs> and uh, here uh, we need the uh, uh, there's a power of uh, 100 watt here. Yeah. So we found that if we increase the mirror radius to uh, one meter, so we dub, we just uh, make uh, <coughs> we just make uh, the diameter from no 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 radius from 0 0.5 to one two times larger. So we can improve the signal to noise ratio more than 100, which is pretty good, and because uh, 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 we can imp we can increase the arm length uh, to five times ten to the uh, three at uh, five times ten to the three kilometer uh, because of, because uh, uh, if we have a larger mirror um, <coughs> diffraction uh, loss um, uh, we can have uh, uh, longer arm lengths so uh, this is one result <coughs> and then. We also implement some uh, thermal noise and uh, double white dwarf noise. Um, <clears throat> we did the same thing. For a given radius, we optimized the other uh, parameters. But here, um, <clears throat> we assumed that cutoff frequency, uh, which means that uh, 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 below, this, below this frequency, uh, white dwarf, white dwarf um, confusion limiting noise, uh, is uh, too too much. So we had two cases, 0 0.07 hertz or 0 0.1 hertz for that threshold. And also we assumed the two cases for pressure inside spacecraft, 10 to the minus 8 Pascal or 10 to the minus 9 Pascal. And the mirror model, uh, constant mass model, uh, always 100 kilogram irrelevant of the uh, radius of mirror or constant thickness level. It, uh, in this case, uh, with 0 0.5 meter uh, thickness, uh, 100 kilogram. So this means that uh, if uh, if we increase the uh, radius to one meter, uh, the 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 mass becomes 400 kilogram, which is uh, pretty difficult. <laughs> but anyway, we did uh, this. <coughs> this is the results. Uh, <coughs> so the same same kind of uh, 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 figures. So this is a cutoff frequency of 0 0.1 hertz case, 0 0.07 hertz case. And of course, uh, with the, uh, zero, uh, this case, uh, we have uh, um, larger 
signal to noise ratio. And here, constant thickness and the constant mass. And of course, constant thickness has a more signal to noise ratio than constant mass case, of course. And uh, this is the pressure 10 to the minus 8 and 10 to the minus 9. Uh, of course, 10 to the minus 9 uh, gives a better signal to noise ratio than, than 10 to the minus 8 because of the thermal noise. Uh, <clears throat> so this is something like that. And uh, of course, the best one is here and the worst one is here. So let's see the best one. Uh, here, uh, we found that if we improve, increase the uh, radius of the mirror to one meter, uh, we can attain um, two, 250 uh, signal, uh, signal to no noise ratio of 250, which is pretty good. Um, but uh, we here we assumed uh, omega GW of 10 to the minus 16, but that's just the upper limit. And it could be uh, lower than, uh, even lower. And uh, <coughs> for it, uh, if uh, it's uh, lower than 10 to the minus 16 by a factor of 10, we have to improve the sensitivity by a factor of 10. And this signal to noise ratio 250 will become only 25. So we have to do something. And we are now thinking of uh, some quantum locking with the optical spring thing uh, for, for some option idea. Uh, this one is, uh, so this is the main cavity. Uh, we implement sub-cavity here, and this is uh, inside one space, space grout here and here. And we control this mirror quantumly um, using this sub-cavity uh, signal. And also we even uh, detune the, the cavity uh, locking for this uh, sub-cavity. And we can do pretty good thing. Uh, <coughs> Here, this is the sensitivity curve. Um, and uh, we, we considered only quantum noise and white to dwarf binary noise uh, is uh, just less than 0 0.1 Hertz. And mass of mirror is assumed to be 100 kilogram and laser power 100 watt is assumed. And here, uh, uh, arm length, uh, in, in case of arm length of uh, 1000 kilometer. Um, <clears throat> so this curve, is just a uh, uh, just the sensitivity uh, with the standard configuration, and if we implement, implement uh, quantum noise, uh, this this is, this sensitivity can be achieved, uh, and uh, signal to noise ratio is improved from 1.4 to 74, and if we implement the optical spring also. Uh, we can have this sensitivity and the signal to no noise ratio is improved to, uh, to more than 200. Uh, <clears throat> for this one, um, this is a case for uh, mirror of radius, mirror with a radius of 0 0.5 meter and arm length is uh, 1000 kilometer. But if we improve the mirror radius to one meter and the arm length can be improved, can be uh, <clears throat> expanded to 5,000 kilometer, and we did the same thing. And the uh, signal to noise ratio with uh, quantum locking with optical spring uh, can be uh, uh, more than 1,000, which means that if, if uh, even, even if uh, omega GW is reduced by a factor of 10, we still have a factor of 100 for signal to noise ratio, which is good. But of course, as I mentioned, uh, we uh, considered only quantum noise. So, uh, so, uh, so um, uh, practically, some practical noise uh, degrade those uh, target sense uh, those sensitivities. <coughs> this is the roadmap for Decigo. Uh, for, uh, before Decigo, we uh, plan to launch B Decigo, and we aim to launch that in 2000, 2034, which is very challenging. But we just uh, put this one, this number, at present. And BD cycle uh, is a kind of smaller version of the cycle. And the uh, interferometer type is the same. Arm lengths are just a hundred kilogram, uh, 100 kilometer instead of 1000 kilometer. Mirror diameter smaller. And uh, wavelengths same. Finesse 100 instead of 10. And laser power one watt. Mirror mass, mirror mass 30 kilogram. And just uh, a <coughs> uh, three, uh, just one cluster, but uh, uh, containing uh, three interferometers. <coughs> so, uh, 
So we decide, well, uh, target, sen target sensitivity is something like this. So of course we cannot uh, measure the uh, PGW uh, with the uh, uh, BD cycle, but we can do, we can measure uh, a lot of things. So observation of uh, neutron star, neutron star binary. So this one, a uh, hundred times a year, which is pretty good. And the revelation of origin of 30 solar mass uh, black hole uh, <coughs> uh, uh, binary. Uh, and a much better parameter estimation of binaries a removal of, and also for technology, technologies, removal of foreground for this cycle can be uh, tried and verification of technologies for this cycle can be um, verified with the BD cycle. <coughs> and uh, for example, for parameter estimation, the BD cycle for uh, the, the angular resolution is pretty good, like a 10 to the minus one uh, square degree. Uh, for Z of, one, uh, Z of 0 0.1 target, which is pretty good. <coughs> and we are doing a lot of uh, R&Ds for BD cycle, uh, <coughs> like uh, bidirectional bi bidirectional interferometer, low noise thruster, high power stabilized laser, et cetera. And finally, uh, I should mention a little bit about the Sylvia, uh, that's a related mission uh, of BD cycle. Uh, Sylvia stands for Space Interferometer uh, Laboratory Voyaging Powers Innovative Applications. And uh, this is a, a candidate for small satellite mission at ISAS JAXA uh, in collaboration with the DESIGO and the Infrared uh, Interferometer team. And the objectives of uh, Sylvia is demonstration of the formation flying technologies and drug-free technologies. Uh, <clears throat> and the recent progress is that uh, 2020 February, uh, Sylvia mission was uh, proposed to ISAS, and uh, August uh, yeah, it was approved to proceed to idea idea implementation process. And just a few months ago, uh, December last year, uh, it was approved uh, uh, to proceed to a mission definition phase. So now uh, we are uh, the next step is uh, down selection for the fifth a small satellite mission. So we really hope that this will be approved. <clears throat> so summary, this I will accomplish a variety of amazing science, including direct observation of primordial gravitational waves to reveal the secret of the birth of the universe. A B disciple will verify technologies for this cycle as well as accomplish a variety of fruitful science, including prediction of neutron star, neutron star collections to reveal its mechanism. Thank you, that's all. Questions? Yeah, Abel on top. So al al along with this neutron neutron star uh, in spiral, which Desigo is attempting to look into, can the slowly rotating neutron star also could be a good source because there are a lot of pulsars which has been observed in radio band which have time period of like one hertz or one time period of one second or 10 seconds and, the, and in frequency band that will be one hertz or 0 0.1 hertz. And that can be a good source for DCGO. And there may be many pulsars which are not emitting in radio band, but they could be also be spotted in this DC hertz band. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, indeed, they are very good, can, uh, very good uh, targets. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you so much for an interesting overview of BDSIGO and DSIGO. Uh, so I had a question about BDSIGO orbit because uh, in several proceedings papers about DSIGO and BDSIGO, it was stated that BDSIGO would be flying on the uh, on the low Earth orbit or in, on some kind of Earth orbit. And in your presentation, you mentioned that the orbit is to be confirmed and it might be actually heliocentric. So I wanted to Maybe maybe you could comment a bit on that. What uh, determines the planned BDSIGO orbit and what it will likely be? Well, actually, um, this is TBD. Um, actually, oh, I <laughs> I don't know why I put uh, this heliocentric. Um, I I think most likely that this will be just uh, geocentric. Mm. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> So another question there, yeah. 
thank you for the for the very nice talk. Uh, my question was that um, supposing LGWA and Desigo were operational at the same time, do you foresee any potential synergies between the two? Well, um, I think uh, as, um, most of you can think of uh, many good things, but uh, um, well, for example, um, what, what's the time scale for L, uh, LGWA? I don't know. Is that like uh, for the so, simultaneously about uh, with the B disciple or disciple? So I mean, we we don't we don't really have a timeline for LGWA yet. But if I had to make a guess, it wouldn't happen before thirty five. So mm. some some time after that. But I I really have no idea at the moment when this would happen. Well, of course, yeah. Um, actually. If the, the sensitivity is uh, kind of uh, uh, comparable, I think, of course, uh, if we have uh, more uh, detectors, that's just a good thing. And also the um, uh, attitude can be can change differently. Uh, that can be a good point. I'm not sure. I, I, I guess. <laughs> uh, Maybe I can think of uh, more good things. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, probably the impact of LJWA would be minor if you have like three, you know, the Cygo constellations, because the I mean the Cygo is just way better in sensitivity than LJWA. So I mean, if there are only two of them, like one the Cygo or one the CP the Cygo, and then LJWA, I think then you for sure there you would profit in many ways, but. As soon as there are more than there's more than one the Saigo triangle at that point, LGWA is kind of out of the game. Um, that's my guess. But in any yeah, case, yeah. <laughs> I I also guess that the Saigo. Um, I don't know when the Saigo will be realized. That's not uh, so soon. Not so soon. Uh, I saw on the low frequency side uh, the Saigo sensitivity did not extend into the Lisa band. Uh, was that just an impression in the... Uh, could you go back to the relative sensitivities of... Uh, yeah. Uh, where, where? Yeah, or... Uh, yeah, this would do. Uh, for example... Sorry, I... The, yeah, so, uh, in the low frequency that, that, band you have stopped extending decigo higher is it because there is no sensitivity there or oh you, you are talking about here yeah well um i we didn't think of uh, this one the, uh, this uh, sensitivity here very seriously sorry i mean actually yeah just that we uh, we are just concentrating on the sensitivity here. So around here, we thought that uh, uh, anyway, uh, it was the sensitivity is limited by some confusing limiting noise, et cetera. So uh, we didn't um, put uh, uh, some reliable, any reliable uh, uh, sensitivity curve here, sorry. Other questions? I see there is a flag actually for a question in the chat. Please connect to the on Zoom for a so sorry, did you ask something? Uh, the, the quality of my uh speaker is not good or something. No, we're I... just waiting because there is probably a question in the chat. Okay. Hello. Yeah, Saiji, I had a question in your conceptual design. You choose a wavelength of 515 nanometer. And uh, yes, the previous one. Is there a specific reason for this? Because uh, with lambda half, you get a scale factor of half or uh, twice. But the effort to convert a fundamental into 
uh, fundamental into the second harmonic is equally tough. So you lose half the energy anyway. And uh, it unnecessarily increases the complexity of a launch mission. So is there anything compelling for this 515? Or a half the micron at one micron? What what? Means? Why not the one micron? Well, just the uh, optical diffraction loss is too much with the one micron. Okay, and, but... Uh, yeah, but uh, the power, power, for example, if you use the same fundamental, a little bit twice the power. So the trade-off is advantageous. I think we 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 win with uh, uh, going, okay. yeah. And okay. I actually um, I'm asking I have been asking our laser guy uh, to uh, to think about uh, even, uh, making this one half and. Uh, 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 he, he was not very uh, enthusiastic about that because uh, that uh, uh, bio, uh, ultra violet um, uh, laser could uh, harm, could impair noise uh, the mirror. But uh, I hope that we can make we can make this one to half, and then we can improve the sensitivity drastically. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, if there are no other questions, let's thank the speaker again. Speaker again.